you're on. Well, we're going to be looking at all four Gospels that, and their narratives about the baptism of Jesus. It always uh, surprises me sometimes that in the Gospel of Luke, we have two sentences that talk about the baptism of Jesus. So short of a narrative. Yet this is one of the more significant things in the ministry of Jesus. In fact, his baptism inaugurated his earthly ministry. Um, so the brevity in which the narrative recounts his baptism doesn't reflect the importance because the importance far outweighs the narrative about the subject. Now, this the baptism of Jesus is one part of Jesus's earthly ministry, which is covered by all four gospels. And I chose to begin our lesson tonight with the description in Mark chapter one, verse nine. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. So we're going to focus on the baptism of Jesus, um, not only as an inauguration of Jesus's earthly ministry, but delve into the subject itself. Why in the world would Jesus need to be baptized by John? You, we almost take it because this is one of the, if you go to museums of art, you'll see artists depict Jesus being baptized by John. It's one of the things that most Christians and many non-Christians know about. And yet, you have to ask the question, if Jesus is perfect, why did he need to be baptized? So we're going to delve into that. Um, the scriptures give us some clues, but it um, it is something that uh, the more I delve into it, the more I thought that there, you can end up speculating, but there are some clues that will give us some guidance on this. This week's scripture is from Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22, just two verses, where in two short sentences, Luke describes Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist. In order to help us understand why Jesus went to John the Baptist to be baptized, we'll also look at Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17, Mark 1, 9 through 11, and John 1, verses 29 through 34. And I'm going to read these scriptures together so that we have an overall idea of what the gospel writers say about the baptism of Jesus. In Luke, the focus scriptures for tonight's lesson, starting with verse 21 in chapter 3, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. In Matthew, he writes about the, God, the baptism of Jesus in verses 13 through 17 of chapter 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan, to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered him and said to him, permit it to be so now. For this, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then in Mark, the part of the, I read part of the description that Mark gives to the baptism of Jesus, verses 9 through 11 of chapter 1. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven saying, 
You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Finally, we get to the Gospel of John. And it's interesting that John doesn't really talk about the actual baptism of Jesus. In verse 29 through 34, John writes, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me. He was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So tonight we're going to focus on Jesus coming to the Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. This momentous event in the ministry of Jesus, like I said before, is recorded in all four Gospels, um, except that John doesn't really mention the actual baptism of Jesus. This is one event, uh, this one event, this Jesus coming to the Jordan to be baptized is the only time in the New Testament that Jesus and John the Baptist are reported to be together. Now, we do have Luke's narrative about Mary visiting Elizabeth and John the Baptist jumping in the womb of Elizabeth and recognizing the uh, Jesus uh, being a fetus inside of Mary. But there is no other New Testament gospel uh, scripture that talks about John the Baptist and Jesus being together except this one time. And so it doesn't mean that they didn't meet with each other, and they probably did. Um, there were caravans where they went on the pilgrimage uh, journeys to Jerusalem to celebrate the pilgrimage festivals. And it's likely that early on, John the Baptist traveled with his family along with the caravan of Mary and her family to Jerusalem. But the scriptures don't mention that. And we know that Jesus grew up in Nazareth and John the Baptist grew up in the wilderness. And so um, whether they ever encountered each other, it is not clear. But this is the one momentous event where both of them appear together. John the Baptist preached a message condemning the Jews and their leaders for their unrighteous acts and sin. John's message was a message calling the Jewish people to repent of their sins and to symbolize their repentance by being baptized, fully immersed in the Jordan River. John's message was a message of calling people to acknowledge their sin, calling people to repent, and then to be baptized in symbolically cleansing themselves and recognizing the sin all in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Well, what about Jesus? Jesus was without sin and had no need to repent and be baptized in the waters of the Jordan. So why did Jesus deliberately come to John the Baptist to be baptized? Now, John recognized this. He's, he, he recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. He recognized that Jesus was without sin. He recognized that Jesus did not need to repent of his sin and to be baptized in the water as a symbol of his repentance for sin in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. So in Matthew, we see that John initially resisted Jesus's request to be baptized. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me so what we have when we put the gospels together is jesus purposely coming to the jordan river to be baptized by john the baptist we have john recognizing to some extent that jesus is there by saying behold the lamb of god and then we have jesus basically 
asking to be baptized by John the Baptist. We have John the Baptist resisting Jesus's request, and then Jesus responding to John's reluctance to baptize Jesus in the waters. Now, I tried to visualize, and there's no scripture that really talks about how this baptism in the Jordan took place. And you can see various depictions about how this took place in various movies that depict Jesus coming to the Jordan. Whether the Jews that were waiting to be baptized were in a line or a quay waiting to come into the Jordan River and coming into the river and then confessing their sins as John is uh, then baptizing them. And you could see a, almost a line of people coming in to the Jordan River being baptized, or whether there are a lot of people in the river and John going around and baptizing the group as they're standing in the Jordan, we don't know. But we do know that when Jesus arrived, basically John stopped baptizing other Jews and he recognized Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And there's a dialogue between John the Baptist and Jesus about, well, John, yeah, I, I shouldn't be baptize, baptizing you, Jesus. You should be baptizing me. And Jesus then responding to that. So Jesus answered, telling John that his baptism was necessary to fulfill all righteousness. Start, Jesus answered him and said to him, permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fill, fulfill all righteousness. Well, what did Jesus mean when he said that his baptism by John fulfilled all righteousness? The main message that I want you to get from tonight's lesson is before Jesus started his ministry on earth, he purposely came to John the Baptist to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. While Jesus was without sin and did not have to repent and be baptized, by John, he acted in obedience to the will of God the Father and presented himself in solidarity to the people who came to John the Baptist to repent of their sins. Just like Jesus put our sins on the cross, he did himself symbolically sharing the requirement for those to repent and be baptized with water in preparation for being baptized by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was without sin when he was crucified. But he bore the sins of those that he died for. Jesus was without sin when he was baptized. And he shared in the experience of those that came to John the Baptist, repenting and seeking salvation from Jesus. So with that, let's get into exploring this in a little bit more detail. The outline of what we're going to talk about is first, Jesus purposely came to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. Second, we're going to talk about why did Jesus submit himself to John the Baptist to be baptized. And third, after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, God proclaimed Jesus as his son and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus. Then we'll have our discussion questions, which will open this up. So our study is the study of Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist and blessed by God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Well, let's start with Jesus purposely came to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus didn't go down from Nazareth to the Jordan River out of curiosity of what John the Baptist was doing. He came for the purpose of John the Baptist baptizing him. And so when we have the scripture, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. The word came is really translated is a deliberate act, came with a purpose. And so the translation of that is, is that it, it's uh, that Jesus had resolved and with purpose came to the Jordan specifically to be baptized by John the Baptist. Now, Jesus was acting in obedience to the will of God the Father. Um, we know this because all the other scripture talking about what Jesus did during his earthly ministry was that he acted with a purpose 
of being obedient to the Father. When we talk about the obedience of Jesus Christ as a true man to the will of the Father, there's two types of obedience that the scholars break down to. The first one is what we call active obedience. During Christ's earthly ministry, he, with a purpose, actively did what the will of the Father was. Uh, we talked in previous lessons about choices uh, that people make, it, that humans make. Jesus, as a true man, acted only in obedience to the Father. The question could be, could Jesus do otherwise? Could Jesus ever have not acted in purposeful obedience to the will of the Father? Um, we'll get into that in a separate discussion. But what we have here is whatever Jesus did, he did with the purpose of being obedient to the Father. And we can draw from that is that Jesus came to the Jordan to be baptized with a purpose of being obedient to the Father. An example in the Gospel of John of Jesus throughout his entire ministry acting in obedience to and according to the will of his Father this act of convenience is referred to in John chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please Him. Obedience to the Father is always pleasing to the Father. And so Jesus coming to the Jordan to be baptized was an act of active obedience to the will of the Father. Now, Jesus was not seeking to be baptized for the same reasons that the people that were coming to John the Baptist were coming to John the Baptist for. They were coming to repent. But Jesus came to John the Baptist in obedience to God who sent Jesus into the world to bear their sins and atonement for God's wrath and judgment. So we get to the ultimate question. Why did Jesus submit himself to John the Baptist to be baptized? Now what we're going to say, let's talk about why the erroneous reasons some scholars say that Jesus came. Some scholars erroneously believe that Jesus became God incarnate when he is baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit not when he was first conceived. Believing that Jesus was transformed when he was baptized by John the Baptist and then filled with the Holy Spirit who descended upon him like a dove, these scholars believe that Jesus' water baptism was necessary cleansing before Jesus received the Holy Spirit. This conclusion is total heresy. And yet you'll see a lot of literature out there that comes to this conclusion. Jesus has always been God. Jesus became God incarnate upon his conception by the Holy Spirit in Mary's body. Jesus was God and never stopped being God. And he didn't have to be cleansed in order to start his earthly ministry. So if you read any of that literature out there, and I was surprised how much literature is out there about Jesus being transformed by his baptism, it's all heresy. Now, we know that when John was reluctant to baptize Jesus, Jesus told John the Baptist that his water baptism was necessary to fulfill all righteousness. Well, Jesus was already without sin and was already completely righteous. What righteousness could be added because of Jesus being baptized? The water baptism affirmed the righteousness which Jesus already possessed. It bore witness of the righteousness of Christ who would later die on the cross, taking upon himself the sins of mankind. It was also an act in solidarity with the sinners who came to uh, came, um, who Christ came to redeem. Sometimes you don't have to participate in a protest but you can stand in solidarity with those that do. Jesus coming to be baptized in the water was identifying himself with the sinners that he came to save. 
and it was an affirmation that Jesus was the one to save him because it affirmed his righteousness. It attested to his righteousness, which already existed. So another way is you can take, we talked about the hypostatic union between Christ as truly God and truly man. And you can say as a perfect man who acted in obedience to the will of the Father, Jesus as a true man attested to his own righteousness by being baptized by John the Baptist and his baptism bore witness to the righteousness. So what you have is Jesus in the flesh coming to be baptized to attest to his Jesus as true God and his righteousness. And so do you have uh, uh, another way of looking at this hypostatic union that Jesus was at the same time true God and true man and that they're acting in union even though there are two uh, aspects of that union together. Neither of them confused or compromised and neither of them separated from each other but acting together in a hypostatic union. So it, does, it doesn't really... One thing that I, I found in I, putting the lesson together is it doesn't answer completely in my mind why Jesus came, except that if you look at the parallel to the cross, Jesus wasn't punished on the cross because of his own sin. And if you look at the parallel there and then go back to the bas baptism, Jesus wasn't baptized because of his own sin. So these acts by Jesus, his baptism that started his earthly ministry and his dying on the cross that ended his earthly ministry, they were all aspects that demonstrated the perfect righteousness of Christ and that he came to affirm and share that righteousness with those that believed on him. And so the, it really is almost like bookends to Jesus's ministry, where he starts his ministry in full righteousness, taking on the act of ba baptism to demonstrate his righteousness. He dies on the cross, fully righteous, to bear the sins of mankind. And so that helps me sort of understand what the scriptures are saying here about why Jesus came to John to be baptized, even though the ministry of John the Baptist was solely for the purpose of having the Jews repent of their sin, confess their sins, and be baptized as a symbol in recognition of their confession of sins. Well, let's talk about what happened afterwards, because all the Gospels talk about after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, the heavens opened. God proclaimed Jesus as his son, and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. In Luke 3, verse 22, and while he prayed, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. One thing that all four Gospels are specifically consistent on is what they heard from heaven. All four Gospels say, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That doesn't come to a surprise to me because if I were ever a witness of the heavens opening and God speaking from heaven and he didn't give a long dissertation like or a long speech like Trump did when he accepted his nomination. This was short and right to the point. I would remember every word. I'd remember that God said, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That and all four gospels specifically quote what they heard. What also is interesting is that the Holy Spirit came down in bodily form like a dove. There was a physicality that came with the Holy Spirit. Anybody that says, well, the Holy Spirit is just spirit, 
Well, this is one of the scriptures that say the Holy Spirit is a person and appeared at the baptism of Jesus when it appeared in bodily form descending upon Jesus and, and resting upon him. So after Jesus rose from the water, God proclaimed Jesus to be his beloved son and revealed from heaven his pleasure of Christ being in obedience. John 1 verses 32 through 34 says, And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. This scripture reveals that John the Baptist was inspired by the Holy Spirit to recognize Jesus as the Son of God because it was confirmed by the Holy Spirit what he saw descending upon Jesus and resting upon him. So John was looking for this sign, and he saw with his eyes the sign of the Holy Spirit descending. And he heard with his ears the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so this confirms to John the Baptist, which John the Apostle reports in his gospel, and I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Now, the scriptures reveal that Jesus was praying as he is being baptized. This is one of the themes about Jesus emphasized in Luke in his gospel. Luke's narrative about the baptism of Jesus, Jesus is the only one that talks about Jesus praying. And this is a theme throughout the gospel of Luke where Jesus is praised to God constantly, praised to God for um, healing of others. Praise to God in the Garden of Gethsemane about being obedient to God's will and going to the cross. Jesus praying after he was baptized in the water in the Jordan. What would you think that Jesus was praying about? The Gospels don't really say. But I can say that think that here Jesus in obedience to the will of the Father comes to the Jordan to be baptized. John resists, but Jesus overcomes that resistance by saying it's necessary to fulfill all righteousness. John the Baptist goes ahead and then baptizes Jesus. Jesus comes out of the water praying. The heavens open up. God speaks from heaven. The Holy Spirit descends from heaven. And the end of the story is the testimony that Jesus is the Son of God not only from God's words from heaven, but by the signs of the Holy Spirit given to John before this event, and then the, the realization, the fulfillment of this message by John the Baptist actually seeing and hearing the voice of God, knowing that Jesus is the Son of God. To me, if you put the whole story together, it affirms the righteousness of Jesus. It affirms the deity of Jesus. It affirms the purpose of Jesus. And so it's all one event. But the baptism was followed by God's blessing and the Holy Spirit descending. And so when you put it together, it kind of helps you understand that, yeah, it was necessary for Jesus to inaugurate his earthly ministry for the purpose of bringing salvation as a Messiah and then ultimately going to the cross and dying for our sins, that Jesus was righteous. He was righteous from the very beginning. And everything he did was for the purposes of bringing our redemption and salvation. So we have that probably Jesus was praying about his ministry, about his purpose, about God's will, not his. Um, up to this time, Jesus was um, growing in wisdom and stature. He was living under the authority of his parents. And now he's basically 
coming out to inaugurate his earthly ministry. We know that immediately after this event, the Holy Spirit whisks Jesus away into the wilderness for the temptation. And then we see the story of Jesus starting his earthly ministry of healing and fulfilling Old Testament prophecies about helping the blind see, the lame walk, and the dead rise from the dead. So we, we see that this is an inaugural event, a very significant, momentous event in Jesus's life. When God spoke from heaven proclaiming Jesus as his beloved son, this pronouncement combines language from Psalm 2-7 and Isaiah 42-1, which were known to the people at the time as referring to the Messiah. So when the people are around the Jordan River and Jesus arrives and John recognizes him saying, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus asks to be baptized. He's in the quay. He comes in the Jordan River. John says, you should be baptizing me. And Jesus says, no, we need to fulfill all righteousness. And then God pronounces from heaven after the baptism, you are my beloved son. It's a Masonic message that the people around him heard and they understood. Basically, they understood God saying that this is the Messiah because the Old Testament prophesied that the Messiah would, uh, in, in Psalm 2 7 and Isaiah 42. So these are Masonic prophecies of the Old Testament fulfilled. It affirms the deity of Christ. Now, it's, we've talked about this before, but the Trinity of the Godhead is manifested in these passages. God speaking from heaven, Jesus being present in the waters of the Jordan River, and the Holy Spirit bodily descending from heaven and resting upon Jesus, attesting to and empowering Jesus in his ministry. This is probably one of the best scriptures of the New Testament to talk about God in three persons, manifested at the same time because all of the Godhead is interacting in unity in terms of God speaking from heaven, testifying that Jesus is his son, Jesus in the water, and the Holy Spirit bodily descending to rest upon him. So the water baptism, the pronouncement from heaven, and the descent of the Holy Spirit consecrated Christ and inaugurated his earthly ministry. So with that, we're going to get into the discussion questions. But it's just, to me, I don't think that there needs to be more than two sentences to describe what happened in terms of the baptism of Jesus. And it didn't take very much uh, for the scriptures to reveal that God affirm that Jesus is his son, that Jesus is God, and, and, and consecrated Jesus for his earthly ministry, inaugurated Jesus with his earthly, earthly ministry by the Holy Spirit bodily descending upon him. So with that, we're going to get into our discussion questions. Prayer and Okay, having just gone into depth about the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist and the blessing of God from heaven proclaiming Jesus as his beloved son and the descending of the Holy Spirit in bodily form to rest upon Jesus, we get the following implications, conclusions, and applications. There is an incongruity in the water baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. John the Baptist's ministry was a baptism of repentance for sin yet Jesus was without sin. John the Baptist recognized Jesus as the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world as revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Because John the Baptist recognized Jesus as the Messiah who is without sin, he resisted Jesus' request for John the Baptist to baptize him. Jesus revealed that John's baptism was necessary in order for Jesus to be obedient to God's will and in order to affirm Jesus' righteousness. Jesus in his righteousness bore the sins of others on the cross in order to atone for God's judgment and wrath. And Jesus in his righteousness 
shared in the baptism of others in order to affirm his righteousness. There's a parallel between Jesus being without sin and dying on the cross for our sin and Jesus being without sin and sharing our, our baptism of repentance. God has chosen this moment to declare Jesus as his beloved son in whom God was well pleased and to commission Jesus's earthly ministry by the Holy Spirit. Okay. 